What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. In the video today, I'm going to show you how to take this really lackluster Amber Collection Velociraptor display base and turn it into a little slice of nature. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we lay down any acrylic paint, we need to prime these little bases first. And for that, I'm using Tamiya Fine Surface Primer, the white color. Now for this base, we're going to do sort of a flat rock color. We're using three acrylic paints, pavement, hippo gray, and granite gray. This is going to be the easiest uh, base out of the two that I'm doing. So uh, anybody who is intermediate or beginner can do this right at home with your own bases. It's going to be super easy to do. So I'm just thinning down the pavement with a little bit of water to help with flow. And we're going to give the uh, base just two uh, light coats of this pavement just to make sure that we have everything covered. We're going to let it dry. And once it's dry, it's going to look nice and rich just like this right here. So now it's time to move on to that second gray. That's the hippo gray. And now what you want to do is get a nice fat dry brush because we're going to be dry brushing the mess out of this thing. You want to dip that brush into the paint and wipe off most of that gray paint on there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to do a nice heavy handed dry brush all over this base. You want to make sure all of the little edges and the cracks and the details really start to pop on this thing. Because that's going to give it that general effect that we're going for. That this is sort of a slab of granite or a flat rock on a river or something like that. So you really want to do a heavy handed dry brush this go around. But you want to make sure you don't have a ton of paint on the brush because you will get streaky looking paint. It'll look chalky and kind of weird looking. So make sure that it, you get most of the paint off, um, but really dig into it on this one right here. It's already starting to look like a slab of rock. It's looking great. Now it's time to move on to that last gray color. Now, since this is our last color that we're putting on, this is the highlight color. So we want to be careful with this one. You don't want to put it on too heavy. You just want to get a little bit on the brush and wipe almost all of it off and then just hit the edges of the rock that's going to bring out all the rock detail, all those little highlights. It's really going to make it pop and it's going to look awesome when you're done. So now I've got it sealed with a semi-gloss sort of um, satin finish to give it that wet rock sheen. And then take the Velociraptor and pop her on top of it. And there we go. So we got one base down and one more to go. Let's do this. All right, so for base number two, we're gonna be mixing it up a little bit and taking it to the next level. We want to add some terrain to this one, right? So some texture and some terrain, some rocks. Now I'm gonna take some of this Gorilla Glue epoxy glue and we're gonna spread this all over the base. So the best way that I have found to get this epoxy to sort of move around is to just get an old beat up junk brush that you don't want anymore that you're about to throw away or it's on its last leg and uh, use that to sort of move the epoxy glue all over the base, get it into all the nooks and crannies, all the little corners and everything like that. Make sure you have even coverage everywhere and then after you have all that epoxy applied, take your sand and lightly kind of sprinkle it over the top of the base. Once you got it on there, knock off the excess and then take your glove and sort of pat down uh, all that sand and push it down into that epoxy. With this stuff here, you have about a five minute window to work with it, and then in about 30 minutes, it cures rock solid. So everything that you push down on it or glue it down with is gonna stay there forever. So a little bit of the details here that I wanna actually glue down to this base are some river rocks, little pebbles that I found out in my backyard. And I'm just kind of, you know, randomly gluing them down to the base using that epoxy to, to really attach them to it. So now that the epoxy has fully cured, I'm going to um, figure out where I want all of my uh, greenery to go. So I've got these two little palm tree tops. Now you may have seen these before in a previous video, uh, the Dilophosaurus display base. I like to use the tops of these for like little ferns. I've got a bunch of them, so I'm gonna go ahead and just recycle them and use them on this base here. What I'm gonna do is take my Dremel and drill pilot holes into the base. And I've got, of course, little dowels up into the plant. I'm just gonna glue them down to the base just like that. Super easy. Of course, you know, uh, Hobby Lobby and other craft stores do sell all kinds of different types of miniature plants that you could probably go and look and see what they've got and apply that to your base. If you wanna do something a little bit different, this is just what I happen to have on hand, you know, and I like to make sure that I don't waste anything. So we're gonna use the tops of palm trees for this but feel free to experiment and see what you can come up with. 
All right, so now that uh, everything is cured and hardened, we're going to go ahead and prime it. we got to, of course, prime it white. And now we're going to go in, and we're going to do sort of a dirty, muddy kind of uh, jungle ground, right? So I'm going to be using that burnt umber. Got it thinned down, and what I'm going to do is just put a couple of coats on the base of that burnt umber. We got it thinned down just as before to help with flow and make sure it gets into all those little sandy nooks and crannies. We don't want any white showing. So with two coats done, this thing is dark, it's looking good. We've got this muddy looking ground going on, all these little pebbly detail. This base is coming out awesome. I can't wait to get finished with this thing. So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go in with another brown, a little bit lighter than what we got going on here. And for that one, I'm going to be using this sort of chocolate brown color. It's the next lightest brown that I've got. Uh, I didn't really have a whole lot of browns on hand, so we're gonna make do with what we got. So we're gonna take it, and of course, just like with the flat rock base, we're gonna heavy handed dry brush all of this chocolate all over the base to really uh, make all those little muddy details sort of pop out, making sure that we hit all the rocks, all the cracks, little sandy areas and whatnot. Uh, pretty straightforward though, it's basically the same exact process as that flat rock. Now we're gonna go in with this coffee latte. It's the lightest brown that I've got that I'm gonna use for this one. And just as before, since this is the last color, it's the lightest one, it's gonna be our edge highlight color. We want to go really, really light with it. We don't wanna go super, super heavy. So, you know, you wanna just uh, be careful and take your time going around here and making sure you, you know, strategically hit all the areas that you want to have hit. You wanna make sure that you keep that dark, you know, brown underneath it to give it some shadow and some depth. But, you know, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be beautiful or perfect. This is nature and it's kind of nasty and, you know, it's the, a muddy jungle. So don't drive yourself crazy by trying to be perfect and neat. So now all the colors have been applied and I have sealed it with a matte varnish. This go around and um, once I get the shrubbery put on, I'll go ahead and attach that little clear plastic display stand that plugs into the Raptor and then pop the Amber Collection Raptor on top of this thing and call it a day. This thing looks awesome. I'm super happy with it. It gives it so much more character and realism and life and it's just so much better than that boring hunk of translucent plastic that it came with. So guys, I hope you found the information provided in this video useful and you're able to uh, be inspired to get out there and get creative and you know customize your bases. I mean, sky's the limit with the amount of different designs that you guys can do and I really look forward to seeing what you guys can come up with if you do decide to uh, tackle this project remember to tag me at Ted Brothers over on Instagram I would love to see what you guys can do with these bases remember for more Jurassic Park related content you guys know where to find me links will be in the description box below you guys take care and I'll see you in the next video